Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you at the end of another working week. It's Friday, 24 hours away from Arsenal versus Brighton, that huge game at the Emirates. We have just been speaking to Mikel Arteta ahead of that match, so I thought I'd pop on. We'll talk about some of the key points from that press conference. Also go over um, some comments from Bert Leno, who's been speaking to Goal um, over in Germany about his future. And also I'll end, as usual, ahead of the match with my predicted 11 for the game against Friday. So obviously the big talking points in the press conference today were about Arsenal's defeat, kind of, against Crystal Palace on Monday night. But certainly about the fallout from that defeat and most importantly the injuries. We have learned since that game itself has part that Kirantini is out for the season and that Thomas Partey could well be out for the season. We don't know for sure when it comes to Partey because no firm return date has been put on him but he is going to be out for a significant number of weeks. Mikel has been speaking about that injury. He's been speaking about Kieran Tierney. He's been speaking about Nuno Tavares and what's going on with him at the moment after he came off at half-time against Crystal Palace. So let's talk about some of these, shall we? Um, first of all, before we get on to party and Tierney, Mikel had this to say. He said, we lost two really big players, really important players for us in the team for sure, but we're not going to have them. So we cannot be crying for that because they're not going to be available for us. We have to find other solutions and we have to still be as good and as competitive as we have been. Now, that is obviously very, very important. Yes, it's a blow. There's no doubt about it. It is a big, big blow. But, you know, it's about how you react to this now, isn't it? And if Arsenal cry, like Mikel says, and feel sorry for themselves, and suddenly two, three, four games are going to go by, Arsenal won't be picking up any points. So we're feeling too sorry for themselves. And that's it. Top four gone. So they have to get straight back on it on Saturday against Christ uh, against Brighton. And um, as Arteta says, they have to find ways to work around the loss of Kieran Tierney and Thomas Partey. Fingers crossed they can do. On the players themselves, this is what he had to say about um, Thomas Partey. He said it's a little bit ambiguous, but he has a significant injury. It will have to keep assessing him, but he will be out for some weeks. Mikel was then asked, you know, is he out for the season? Will we see him again this season? He said... It could be, but it could not be the case uh, because it's an area where he's been a previous injury as well and he felt it straight away and he is not fit. So he's basically sitting on the fence a little bit there saying it could be, but it might not be. Um, but I think they actually genuinely don't know yet. I've spoken to someone who's very close to Thomas Partey um, and he was hopeful that Partey will play again this season. But again, no one knows yet exactly how long it's going to be. You look at Partey's old injury when he had this thigh problem before. He was out for about six weeks, I think, before he came back for that Tottenham game. He wasn't ready. He injured himself again and was out for another long period of time. You kind of look at that six weeks. I mean, Tommy Asu's got a thigh injury at the moment. How long has he been out for? For me personally, I think it's very doubtful that we're going to see Thomas Partey again this season. And even if we do, he might come back for the last couple of games, but then he's got to find his fitness again. So I think Arsenal need to kind of put party to one side right now and start focusing on who they do have available for them and what they're going to how they're going to make things work to ensure they can still try and pick up as many points as they can between now and the end of the season because there's still so much to play for you can't just think oh we've lost Thomas party feel sorry for ourselves we've got to find a solution um and hopefully that's what they can do so that's what Mikel said about Thomas party and then he spoke about Kieran Tierney Obviously, um, he said it was very early to understand how everything is going to develop with Kieran. He's going to be out for the, uh, the period that we estimated. But to know what condition he'll be after that, we just don't know. It's too soon to be able to say something. And that, that answer was in response to, do you think he could possibly pay for Scotland in the World Cup qualifiers in June? Now, to be honest, I imagine for Mikel Arteta, that's the furthest thing from his mind. He doesn't really care if he, Kieran Tierney plays for Scotland or not in June. He just wants to make sure he's going to be back available for pre-season, which is in July, and then he's available for the start of next season, obviously. Um, but again, that's just an example of just how long Kieran Tierney is going to be out. If you can't say for sure that he's going to be back in June, then you know it's a really, really bad injury. He's going to be out for a long, long time. And that is a blow for Arsenal. We know that. They've got issues at left back. We know that. It's just... It's like deja vu, isn't it? Arsenal lost Kieran Tierney at this stage of last season. They had to end up with Granit Xhaka as a makeshift left back. Um, didn't work. That's why they went and signed Nuno Tavares in the summer to ensure they had proper natural understudy for Kieran Tierney. And now, unfortunately, Tierney gets injured right at the time and Nuno Tavares is having a bit of a shocker and a real crisis of confidence. So it's not ideal, but that is where we are with the injuries at the moment. And that is what Mikel Arteta had to say. Okay, so we'll carry on about Nuno Tavares now because Mikel, quite understandably, was 
asked about him as well, given what's happened to him, given he got hauled off again at half time against Crystal Palace. He only played 35 minutes in his start before that against Nottingham Forest, so it's not a good time for Nuno Tavares. I saw he's tweeted yesterday on social media um, saying it was a difficult night for him, for everyone, for the team, for the fans, but it's all about how they res- how you respond now. And, you know, hopefully Mikel will give him another chance. I think he should. I spoke about it on yesterday's video, I think. Yes, it's a tough time for Nuno Tavares at the moment, but I think he's the best option to have to when it comes in at left back. Any Anything else is just too disruptive for the team. It's moving players out of position. It's making yourself weaker somewhere else in the, in the pitch. The whole reason you signed Nuno Tavares was to play if Kieran Tierney wasn't available. Kieran Tierney's not available, so you play Nuno Tavares, surely. It's just about trying to build that confidence level back up with him. And Mikel was asked about him and you know how difficult it's been he said look he he hasn't been playing a lot of minutes he needs the rhythm and an understanding of his teammates we need to help him out to do that I spoke with Nuno because I care a lot about how the players feel and we are here to help them make their careers better it was a decision that hurt Nuno obviously he understands that it was for the benefit of the team or that I believed it was for the benefit of the team and he respects that now he needs to react on that situation because it's a great opportunity to learn a lot in this period of his career and it is a great opportunity but I think if he's going to learn a lot he needs to be playing and I think leaving him out of the team this weekend might end up doing him more harm than good yes he's in a bad run of form but sure you know we saw what Nuno Tavares can do at the start of the season when he was confident and was in the team and especially at home as well and you know you look at this game against Brighton yes Brighton are a a decent football inside and they they keep the ball pretty well but they're not going to put Arsenal under huge amounts of pressure it's not like you're playing Liverpool or playing Manchester United I mean if you can't play Tavares on Saturday at home to Brighton then what's the point of even having him yes he's in a bad run of form at the moment but I think it's really really important that Arsenal get him back in form because any other any other thing you do when it comes to replacing Kieran Tierney, it's just going to make yourselves weaker out wide. Whether it's put Xhaka back there, which you can't do because of Thomas Party, move Ben White to right back and play Cedric at left back. You know, these are just all options. Play three at the back, play Tavares more as a wing back. It's just really, all of them are just really, really disruptive for the team and they're going to make you weaker in other areas of the pitches. So it's just really important. And I hope this week, Mikel says that he has been doing it. And I hope this week he's put a bit of an arm around Tavares and said, look, it, obviously Monday night was difficult for you. But we need you and we need to get you back to your best. And, you know, sometimes players need an arm around that shoulder. And I think some, you kind of get the impression when it comes to Arteta that maybe that's one thing he's not very good at behind the scenes um, when it comes to that sort of loving touch. When it, as a man manager, you sort of look at players like, I don't know, managers like Klopp, um, you know, and they've got the Midas touch when it comes to to that sort of thing. Um not sure Arteta has got that, to be honest, yet. He's still very young when it comes to his coaching career, but hopefully he has at least been putting his arm around Tavares a bit this week and trying to get his confidence level up because Arsenal really do need him. And for me, he should be starting um, tomorrow at the Emirates. Um, before I move on to Bert Leno's comments, just a few other uh, things that Mikel had to say. He was talking about, he spoke a lot about um, the, the home fans at the Emirates and I think that he really wanted to get that message across how much Arsenal are going to need their fans now and you know I think he's absolutely bang on the Emirates crowd has been brilliant this season the best it's been for for years I think I've said it before I think only 2007 2008 seasons something that's really comparable when it comes to home atmospheres this season the Emirates has got right behind the team and they're going to need that now to try and get them over the line in these last few home games that are remaining the team's been weakened by these injuries so the crowd are going to have to play a big big part and I thought it was very obvious that Mikel was trying to get that message across during this press conference. Um, he also kind of, this is what he said, look, we have to react now. It's up to us. We have to lift the players, recognise why we lost on Monday, react and move forward. We want to score more goals. We are certainly creating the chances to do so, but we've been struggling to put the ball in the net. He's absolutely spot on there. I spoke about it in a video a couple of weeks. Uh, a couple of videos earlier this week that for me I'd be trying something new when it came to the centre forward on Saturday I'd like to see Martinelli start as a central striker I know it's not something Arteta has really done too much but I just think the last couple of games three games really that Lacazette has just not been at the races he's not been doing what he was good at and we know he's been struggling to score but he has at least been contributing setting up goals setting up chances he hasn't really done that for the last few games it's been very seems like he's been very easy to mark and to play against for a centre back and kind of look at Martinelli and Yes, he might not be able to hold the ball up. Yes, he might not be able to play the ball around the corners like um, Lacazette will do. But he's certainly going to run at defenders. He's going to try and get on their on their shoulder and sort of run into the space behind them. And maybe give them a little bit of a uh, extra problem and something. I think if, if the Brighton defenders put it this way, I was on Arse Blogs 
I did the Ask Blog podcast today. If you haven't heard it, give it a listen. Andrew tweeted out this morning. Um, and I said that the Brighton defenders at the moment, I bet you when the team sheet's announced at 2pm tomorrow, if they see Lacazette on the team sheet, they won't be that worried. If they see Martinelli on the team sheet as a central striker, those Brighton centre-backs will be like, oh God, we're going to be in for a difficult afternoon today. And I just feel like, you know, there needs to be a... There needs to be a change. You can't just keep playing Lacazette just because he's Lacazette if he's not performing and he's not contributing in any way. In the last couple of games, he hasn't. So this just feels like a good opportunity to change things up for me. I don't think he's going to do it, but, you know, I'm not the manager. But for me, it's something that I would uh, certainly consider this weekend. Bernd Leno has been speaking about his future. Like I said, he's been speaking to us over in Germany, Gold Germany, um, and Spox, who also, uh, they're over there. And... Um, this is what he's had to say, first of all, about his future and whether he might leave this summer. He says, you can't rule anything out. I'm 30 years old, so you think that despite the ambition and the impatience, you might be a bit more relaxed about such a topic. Of course, there are always approaches. It's about playing here, but it's about playing here at Arsenal. That's my first ambition. If the club plans otherwise, then they, if a plan, if a if the club plans otherwise, then they have to approach me. Of course, my agency and I are keeping an eye on the situation, um, which you would understand. He's only got a year left in his contract now, Bernd Leno. But I think he'll go in the summer. I'd be very surprised. I mean, Arsenal have already signed Matt Turner, the American goalkeeper. He's going to be coming in as number two to Ramsdale. So, you know, I think the club will be very open to letting Bernd Leno go this summer and he will leave. Um, he, Leno also was kind of speaking about what it was like when he found out he was dropped after those opening three games of the season and Ramsdale was getting his chance. He said it was a setback and a bitter moment, but that sport, you have to accept it. It wasn't easy, but I couldn't feel sorry for myself. I wanted to attack again immediately. I don't want to say I was a pawn, but when the results aren't right, sometimes things happen quickly in football. The coach wanted to set a new impulse and then the results came. It was bitter for me because I'd held up well before that. I've never experienced anything like that in my career before but I looked ahead my ambition is always to play I know what I can do I'm not 20 anymore um, when I could say I still have time I think that last bit there I'm not 20 anymore where I can say I still have time it's, that's quite telling I think when it comes to Leno's future he's, you know he's 30 now he's not a substitute goalkeeper you know he's trying to get in the Germany squad for the World Cup he's just not really got any time to sit on a bench he's sat on a bench for a whole season pretty much this year so he'll want to go this summer even though he's been quite diplomatic uh, in those other comments when he's speaking about his future um, but I thought they were interesting nonetheless I'm going to tweet that article out actually so if you want to see the full comments from Bernd Leno where he talks a lot about this season and his future then head over to my social media you'll find the interview uh, the link for the interview there for you to, to give it a read Okay, so finally, before I go, as I said, let's go with the predicted 11 now. This isn't what necessarily what I would go for, and it's just what I think Mikel might do, as always. Um, so this is what I think Mikel's probably might well go for when it comes to kicking off against Brighton. Rams down and goal, obviously, and this is providing there's been no injuries that we don't know about that have been kind of kept under the wraps. Uh, under wraps. So Rams down and goal, Cedric, White, Gabriel and Tavares for the back four. I think he's going to play Xhaka as a sort of deep holding midfielder and then have Sambi Lakonga come in with uh, Martin Odegaard in that kind of 4-3-3 formation we've seen recently. Then I think he's going to go Saka, Martinelli and Lacazette. I've got a feeling Martinelli might get the nod over Smith Rowe. Um, I thought that Martinelli was really, really good when he came on in the second half against Crystal Palace. And it's that kind of performance where you think that he needs to be on the pitch at the moment for Arsenal. Personally, as I said, if it was me, I'd play him as a central striker on Saturday, but I don't think Mikel's going to do that. I think he'll stick with Lacazette again. But I wouldn't be at all surprised if we see Smith Rowe on the bench and Martinelli on the left-hand side of that attack. Obviously, I think he'll play Tavares at left-back as well. So that's the, my predicted 11. That's what I think Mikel Arteta will go for when it comes to Arsenal versus Brighton. So one last time, Ramsdale, Cedric, White, Gabriel, Tavares, Xhaka, Sambi, Odegaard, Saka, Lacazette and Gabriel Martinelli. That's it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Everyone, thanks for watching the videos all throughout this week. I will be at the Emirates tomorrow for that big, big game. So keep your eyes peeled for all the usual stuff from me. Have a very good Friday. Enjoy your night tonight. And if you're going to the game tomorrow, safe travels. Enjoy the match. And if you're not, wherever you're watching it around the world, fingers crossed we see Arsenal get back to winning ways because we certainly need it. Have a good day, everyone.